Hello everyone, so welcome to this lecture. So this is like the farewell lecture. So I have finished a form, uh, I have formally finished a course. So just a quick summary regarding what we have learnt in this course. So the fundamental problem that we have addressed in this course is that of secure communication where the problem statement is the following. We have two unknown parties who do not have any pre-shared information say Sita and Ram meeting for the first time connected by a publicly known channel and their goal is basically to apply some algorithms and get an effect of a virtual secure channel over this publicly known channel and this virtual secure channel should ensure that uh, this Sita and Ram are talking to each other in a uh, secure manner and when I say secure that means I need to satisfy three properties namely privacy, integrity and authentic authentic authentication. And we have seen uh, we have seen a two stage solution to solve this problem. In stage one uh, we solve the key agreement problem uh, using public key cryptography where the goal of Sita and Ram is to agree upon a common key and to do that uh, we use number theoretic hard problems and public key encryption. And once the key is agreed upon, then in the stage 2, the Sita and Ram performs authenticated and private communication using private key cryptography or symmetric key cryptography. And for that, we have introduced several building blocks like pseudo random generator, pseudo random function, pseudo random permutation, and strong pseudo random permutation. We have seen various attack models both for stage 1 as well as stage 2 namely we have seen passive adversarial model and with respect to passive adversarial model we have uh, cipher text only attack and chosen plain text attack whereas for a malicious or active adversary we have considered the chosen cipher text attack model. And for each of the cryptographic primitives that we have used in stage 1 and stage 2 we have uh, followed a rigorous three stage approach namely in stage 1 we have formally defined what exactly we want to construct what exactly is the definition of security for that given primitive uh, for the primitive that we are interested to construct. Once we have the formal definition in stage 2 we give an algorithmic construction for that primitive and once we have the algorithmic construction in stage 3 we give we gave a rigorous formal security proof for the construction that we have given and show, show that indeed the uh, algorithmic construction satisfies the formal definition that we have given in stage 1. So as I said during my first lecture cryptography is not just about solving the problem of secure communication. In this course we just focus on secure communication but the umbrella of cryptography covers lots of lots of advanced topics. So we can do many many fancy things using cryptography. So for instance we can do secure multi-party computation uh, where a set of mutually distrusting parties can interact with each other and perform or carry out any kind of computation securely without revealing their data to each other. We can design special purpose encryption schemes like non-committing encryption, deniable encryption, fully homomorphic encryption, functional encryption for specialized task. We have a whole lot of, uh, uh, we have an entire branch of what we call as uh, leakage resilient cryptography which takes into account what we call as side channel attack or side channel information. So throughout the course throughout this course when we were analyzing or when we were formalizing the security requirement we just considered that adversary has got access to encryption oracle or decryption oracle or some kind of oracle access to the, to the key. But it turns out that during the practical deployment of uh, cryptographic primitives adversary might get other kind of information or side channel information which cannot be modeled or which were not modeled. Uh, in the formal definitions that we have seen in this lecture. For instance, it might be the case that adversary get access to the power trace of the decryption algorithm that means how much power the decryption algorithm is consuming. Then depending upon the power trace of the decryption algorithm, adversary can indeed find out what exactly is the value of the decryption key. So that is the kind of side channel information which is not formally captured in the formal modeling that we have done in this course. So it turns out that there we have a whole branch of cryptography dedicated uh, into the design of uh, uh, side channel dedicated into the design of cryptographic primitives taking into account the side channel information and that branch of cryptography is called as leakage resilient cryptography. In the same way we have another branch of cryptography called lightweight cryptography where we study the design of cryptographic primitives for resource constrained environments like RFID, IoT, etc. So 
uh, a key bottleneck in the resource constraint environments like RFID, IoT, wireless sensor networks is that the computing speed is very, very low. And there we cannot use the typical cryptographic primitives because typical cryptographic primitives operates with a key size of say 256 bits if we are in the symmetric key world or 1024 bits if we are in the public key world. But we cannot perform that much heavy computation in this resource constraint environment. So, the question is can we come up with a new set of cryptographic primitives which do not require that amount uh, that much amount of computation and a branch of cryptography dedicated to the study of such cryptographic primitives is called as light crypt cryptography. So, I hope that in the future I might be able to offer course covering some of these uh, advanced topics. So, finally, the concluding remarks. So, uh, first of all this is the first time I am offering any MOOC course. So, during the uh, beginning of during the first few lectures it was uh, quite inconvenient for me because this is the first time I am doing a recording, a live recording uh, where there are no students available in the class. So, uh, I, I took, it took some time for me to get uh, accustomed to this setting and I must confess that my spoken English is very bad compared to my written English. So, you always might uh, find some linguistic errors, uh, grammatical errors. So, kindly apologize, kindly I beg your pardon for the same and I would I also like to stress that uh, in several lectures it so happened that there are various typos uh, coming while, and while recording. So, for instance, if I am supposed to say deterministic, I end up saying randomized. If I am supposed to send a variable x, I, in call, uh, I end up calling it y and so on. So, it becomes very difficult to rectify such minor issues uh, um, by re-recording it. So, I am not doing that, uh, but I hope that depending upon the context it will be clear that they are just typos and I hope that during the transcription process where when these lectures are transcribed those uh, typos get rectified. And I would like to put some acknowledgements here. So, I would like to dedicate this course to key people who have contributed in my academic development. So, I would like to first uh, dedicate this course to the first set of gurus that uh, who have actually sowed the seed of uh, theoretical computer science and abstract thinking in me during my student days. So, they are Professor Kamla Kriti Vasan, my MS supervisor who taught me automata theory, uh, Professor C. Pandurangan who was my PhD supervisor who taught me algorithms and cryptography and Professor S. A. Chaudham. Uh, who taught me graph theory. So, these people played a tremendous role in my academic development. I would also like to acknowledge Professor Palash Sarkar and Professor Nigel Smart who were my postdoctoral supervisors. I learnt a lot from them and what I find amazing about them is that even though by training they are theoretician, I am simply amazed by the level of practical knowledge about cryptography, about the applied concepts that they have. And I am also super amazed by their efficiency, how efficiently they handle even any kind of complicated task. And last, not, last but not the least, I would, like to dedicate, I would like to acknowledge the authors of this wonderful book, Introduction to Modern Cryptography uh, by Jonathan Katz and Yehuda Lindel. So, the cryptography, the way I know and I have taught in this course is completely because of this wonderful text. Even though I have read several texts in, on cryptography, I can confidently say that the ease and the convenience with which even a highly complex topic is explained in this book, I could never find in any other textbook. So, as I said during my first lecture, I strongly recommend anyone who want to uh, do research or learn cryptography to buy a personal copy of this book and have it in their bookshelf. And finally, some shameless advertisement from my site. So, I am always looking for full time motivated MS and PhD research scholars who want to work in cryptography and if you are interested you should apply in response to the advertisement uh, for MS and PhD positions published at Triple ITV website. This is the website and we have admissions happening twice a year and please do not write to me for research assistant internship or project positions. I am only interested in MS and PhD uh, research scholars. So, you should add, uh, apply against the advertisement. and. If, if I find your application interesting, then indeed you will be called for the written test and interview and so on. With that, uh, I end this course. I really enjoyed teaching this course uh, and I hope to meet you sometime in the near future with another course on cryptography. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.